I kept farting and I could not control it because I couldn't feel my butt cheeks. Like Hey guys, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Hawa Funga. If you're not a subscriber, go ahead and hit that button. Become a ninja for all of my returning ninjas. What's up? Thank you for being with me. I love you all. Today I'm going to be telling you it's story time. I know y'all like story times. I love story times. This is going to be my actual birth story. My first birth story. I have two kids. So my first one, my birth story is so weird bizarre crazy whatever you want to call it if you haven't watched my first story time about how i didn't know i was pregnant um you should go check out that video first and then come back here i'll link it up here let's just get right into the story it's gonna be a long story so grab your mimosas if it's in the morning grab your coffee your tea your wine your popcorn whatever you want to grab so if you remember from my last story I found out I was pregnant. By the time I found out I was pregnant, I was so far along in my pregnancy, about six, seven months. When I found out I was pregnant, um, I'm going to be telling you basically my birth story, but I'm going to be telling you events that led up to my birth story and then my birth story because it's freaking crazy. It's crazy, okay? The first thing first that happened, that was, that was crazy. So I have sickle cell um, disease. If you don't know what that is, go look it up because... I don't got time to explain it, but I was born with it. <clears throat> I had it all my life, but I've never had severe, we get these things called crisis or episodes. I've never had severe episodes. I remember having one or two when I was very little, but for the most part, I had a very normal childhood um, all the way up until this point. I do want to mention that I would have these random pains. I remember one time I went to the mall with my friends um we took the train and my leg was hurting so bad and i could not figure out why my leg was hurt i was taking taking advil and the pain would not go away and i never thought to like bring it up to my mom i would just go through the pain and just it'll eventually go away but i did not know what the pain was but now i know that was from my sickle cell but those are the only times i really had like crisis or um episodes but for the most part my childhood was pretty much normal <clears throat> So one day, um, if you remember from the last story, I was living with my sister. My sister's a nurse, so she works during the day. Since I was pregnant, I didn't return back to school. Me and my boyfriend came home for the summer. We were supposed to go back to school for the fall semester, and I didn't return. I ended up going to community college and taking classes there. So <clears throat> my boyfriend did go back to school, so I was just it was just me and my sister. At this point, my parents weren't talking to me. I was sitting at home by myself, just chilling. Probably like seven, six, seven months pregnant around this time. I start to feel these crazy pains. It feels like my whole body was in pain, but the pain started in my back. And then it moved to my hips and then it moved to my legs and then my arms. And it's like, I can't really describe the pain because it's a pain that I never felt before. Um, if you look at sickle cell crisis, it hurts really bad, but it is like a sharp it's feel like a stabbing pain. It hurts so bad. But it was just getting stronger and stronger. But I'm usually type of person. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to, you know, drink some water. I'm going to try to go to sleep, blah, blah, blah. The pain got worse and worse and worse. And I was like, it came, it became unbearable. It was so bad. And at this point, I didn't know what it was because I've never had, you know, any episodes or whatever. So I didn't really think anything of my sickle cell. It hurt so bad that I was in tears. I was literally in fetal position in the middle of the living room and I could not move. My cell phone was upstairs on the top level. I had to crawl up the steps to get to my cell phone to call my boyfriend's mom because at the time again he was at school and she lived literally up the street and I just figured she was the closest person um, to me that could get to me so I called her and I call her crying. When I was on the phone with her, I couldn't even explain to her what was happening. I was like, please just come, just come, just come. I'm in so much pain. So she came, she rushed in. I remember being on the steps in fetal position. Like I can't move like a pregnant and in so much pain. She's like, what's wrong? What's wrong? I could tell from her face that she was scared. And I was like, I don't, I was just telling her like, I don't know. I'm in so much pain. Like, I don't know what's going on. Like I was scared because I was like, am I like having a miscarriage or something? Like what the hell is going on? I was so scared. So she was like, come on, I'm going to drive you to the hospital. So 
we get in the car we get in the car and then we go to like a local hospital and we get there and they like you know do the normal because i was in, i was pregnant and i was so much pain they didn't know what it was so they did like see me almost immediately or whatever and then long story short i was just having a sickle cell not just having i was having a sickle cell crisis and they were like yeah it's a problem because I, they were like you um have a rare you have a rare case of sickle cell and you don't have crisis as much as other sickle cell um patients do but now that you have like another human being growing in your body it's like it triggered you to have this episode that's what's going on whatever you need to remember this so at that time i was in so much pain so they were like you, we know you're pregnant so here are the med the pain medicines that are safe for you to have which they said that morphine and dilaudid was safe for me to take because of the level of pain i was having no like no normal pregnant person should take any type of pain medicine but the level of pain I was in they were like it would be okay for me you know to take it or whatever but it was up to me and at that moment I was like if y'all say it's safe and I'll be all right and the baby will be all right yes give me that so they gave me the pain medicine through the IV um which helped my pain a lot it ended up admitting me and then the next day I was fine and I got sent home boom fine after that I had crisis a lot, almost like every other week. Like they were just, I would go home for a week or whatever and then I'll get sick again. Between the time that, you know, I had my first crisis to the time I gave birth, I had a lot of sickle cell crisis and I had a lot of pain medicine. Remember that. At one point, I was addicted to pain medicine which I will get into later. I was literally always in the hospital or whatever. And like I said, my boyfriend at the time was at school, so he was rarely there. Um, He did visit and come like visit me and stuff like that when I was in the hospital, but for the most part, it was just my sisters. And then eventually my parents came around because they know that I was getting sick and I was in the hospital, so they did come around um, to my pregnancy because if you, if you watch the first story, you know that, you know, they were mad at me and weren't talking to me. But this is the reason why they eventually came around. So let's get into the second part of my pregnancy that was crazy. I was taking um, morphine and Dilaudid. And they were like small pills for my pain or whatever. And they were like, you could take, you know, up to three a day. So I would like just be popping them or whatever. They told me it was safe. So I'm thinking, okay, it's safe. And I'm in pain. So I'm going to take it. But then it came a point where I would feel sick when i didn't take it and i had when i went to my appointment to visit my doctor like the day before my baby shower i told them that i was feeling sick every time i wouldn't take my pain medicine and they were like that's our problem like you, we need to start weaning you off so start you don't want to just go cold tur turkey and just stop taking them if i was taking three a day take two for like a couple of days and then from going go from taking two for a couple of days to take one for a couple of days and then down to zero so that next day that's why i started to try and wean myself off but me being dumb i'm like i don't need wean myself off i'm not addicted to medicine like i'm not addicted i'm just going to stop taking it all together so the next day was my baby shower um and it was later in the afternoon and i didn't take no pain medicine that day yeah i remember opening like we're sitting there everybody's like looking at us and i'm opening the presents and i just feel so weak like my i started shaking like uncontrollably shaking i felt so tired I, like put my head down and i like asked my boyfriend like because you know he was there for the baby shower I was like can you open the rest of the gifts because i feel i'm tired or whatever so i was laying down and i remember my aunt with well, his aunt saying how this is your baby shower you need to open your gifts and i was just like i was like i don't feel good i don't feel good then in that moment, I knew what it was. It was because I didn't, like, I tried to cold turkey the medicine. So I went upstairs and I popped one. I popped one of the Dilaudid pills or whatever. And I instantly felt better. Y'all, this was crazy. Like, I was addicted to pain medicine. And I'm telling you all this. I really don't want to tell y'all this because I don't want anybody to think, like, I was a drug addict or anything like that. But this is real life. This is what happened yeah so from that moment i took like weaning myself off the medicine seriously and even when i did go to the hospital for like sickle cell crisis i told them to try to treat me more with like just liquids like fluids and oxygen i've also had a couple of blood transfusions and i had a blood transfer which brings me to my next crazy moment um leading up to my birth i had 
uh, sickle cell crisis that was really bad. Like, it was probably one of my worst ones that I had so far in life. And they were basically like, you need to have a blood transfer. And the difference between blood transfusion and blood transfer is a blood transfusion is you just add blood into your, you know, your already blood or whatever. They just add blood. Blood transfer is they take most of your blood out and put new blood in completely because my blood cells were just crap like they they were fucked up they were they were not working um it was that bad so in order for them to do the blood transfer they had to put a port in my main my main artery vein and it was a minor procedure to put that in or whatever so i remember going to the hospital and most of my family was there because it was like a minor procedure and this is like this is basically the story about how I almost died. They put a port in there and then I did the blood transfusion and the blood transfusion was successful. But I had to stay overnight so they could observe me, so they could make sure that my body takes the blood without rejecting it and that you know they keep an eye on me and they keep giving me tests to make sure that my hemoglobin and everything's going back to, to normal. The hospital that I, always get, that I was getting treated at and that I gave birth, birth at was Georgetown University Hospital, which is a teaching hospital. So a lot of the doctors and nurses are like students. So this was probably like my second or third day in the hospital after the blood transfer. And they come in the room to draw blood and they come in the room to give me my IV and give me my medicine, things like that. So this one nurse, she came in, student nurse, I don't know if they call it nursing students. She was like, oh, you have a port because I still had the port. And this a port you could always like if you have any type of if you have sickle cell, like cancer or anything like you have a port so that you like whenever you go to the hospital, you don't have to get poked like you could keep it. But I ended up deciding to take mine out eventually. But um, I had a port. She was like, oh, you have a port so I can just draw your blood for your port. And I was like, OK, didn't think anything of it. Like I've heard of that before. Boom. So I'm just looking at her and I just feel weird about this for some reason. I just felt weird about it, but I was like, she went and she got the materials and she got the little the syringe with the saline water. So, you know, before they draw your blood, they got to clean out the pore. Even if you had an IV, they would have to clean it out and then they give you the administer the medicine or draw your blood. So she hooked it to my pore at the end and she went to, you know, push it, push the saline in to clean out the pore. All of a sudden, I was just like, <gasps> like, I guess for air. And I was like, I can't breathe. And she was like, huh, you can't breathe? And after that, I literally could not breathe. I couldn't say anything. I was just like, like, I was gasping. I couldn't even gasp for air. I remember just saying, I can't breathe, trying to gasp for air and didn't. And then I remember just blacking out. Oh, I heard cold blue, cold blue. And then I just completely blacked out. When I woke up, I had tubes in my mouth. I had all these like things, medical things to connect connected to me. I looked around and it was all these doctors and nurses like surrounding me. It was y'all, I know for a fact, like I think I died. Like I never felt or seen anything like it, like in real life with me. None of my family was there because it was like the like one in in the daytime and everybody was at work or school or whatever. So the nurse had gave me my phone. I had texted my sister. I was like, please come to the hospital right now. It's an emergency. Like, I almost died. And she rushed to the hospital. I, and this is my sister. That's the, um, the lawyer, not the nurse. And she was going off. She was so mad. She was like, you need to sue, blah, blah, blah. Was, that's a whole nother story, y'all. Like, that's a whole nother story. Me and the baby. Like, almost died. So what happened was, you know how in the movies and the shows, when they take the needle and you see them push it up and like the little medicine or whatever come out the top of the needle and then they poke you and they like pluck it and stuff like that that's to get the air bubbles out the nurse forgot to do that and she basically put an air bubble in my vein and it was like my main artery like vein air bubbles in your bloodstream or whatever could like kill you like people die from that so that's basically what happened like I literally kind of died and then came back to life I don't know I don't even know what they did to bring me back or whatever I just know I had all this shit connected to me I had metal in my mouth I had oxygen everywhere I had doctors everywhere and they explained to me that's what happened and 
It was very scary because I thought that I was going to lose baby. It was very scary. So that was the third crazy thing that happened to me leading up to birth. A few weeks later, I went to the doctor, you know, to get my regular checkup and everything. And they were looking at baby, doing the sonogram, and they found that he was breached. And my due date was coming up, and they were like, oh, baby, need to turn around because you need to prepare, start preparing for, you know, birth because your due date is in a couple of weeks. So I'm like, okay. So they were like, the next time you come to the doctor, if he's still breached, you have two options. You could just schedule a C-section or you could do something that's called conversion. And conversion is a basically when they turn the baby, physically turn the baby in your stomach so that he could be head down. They say, go home and think about it. By the time your next appointment, we'll see. Next appointment come, boom, he's still breached. So I'm like, I want to have a natural birth. Like, I don't want to schedule a C-section. Let's just, you know, go for the conversion or whatever. And they basically told me there's things that could happen in any type of procedure. And the thing that they told me that could happen in this one is that it, one, may not work. Like, they could try to attempt to turn the baby. As they turn him, the umbilical cord could wrap around him or wrap around his neck or something like that. And that could harm the baby. So, I set up an appointment to go do the conversion. And appointment day came. So, they basically say, say my procedure was at, like, scheduled for like 12 o'clock I had to be at the hospital at 7 and they tell you like don't eat don't drink anything before your procedure so my friend um spent the night over my house and she came with me to the hospital poor thing y'all we got there probably like 7 8 o'clock my conversion was supposed to probably be at like 12 o'clock noon but my conversion didn't happen until like 7 like 7 at night 7 8 o'clock at night I don't know why. I think it's because there were a lot of emergencies that was happening that day. So every time there was an emergency, they pushed me back. They pushed me back. They pushed me back. So they just put us in this room. And my poor friend was just like laying on that hard ass <laughs> bed couch thing. If you're watching this girl, thank you. I appreciate you. She stuck. She was stayed there the whole time with me. Like the whole time we waited during the procedure, after the procedure. So let me tell y'all about the procedure. Once they finally gave us the go, like, okay, you're going, let's prep for procedure. So what they do is you get a epidural. So, you know, the epidural that they give you when you are about to give birth to numb you or whatever, they give you that. So I had an epidural. I was so scared, y'all, because I saw the needle. The needle was like this long. Like, this is my first time seeing it in person, and it scared the crap out of me. Like, I was scared. I was like, oh, my God, oh, that, that, that. And they were telling me that it goes like straight in your back. Oh my gosh. So anyways, it wasn't that bad. Like once I got it, like it wasn't that bad. I, I feel like I felt worse pain than that. So I got the epidural and my body got, you know, the lower half of my body got numb eventually. And then what they do is they literally take like all of the gel and oil and just like squeeze it like all over your belly. And then, no, I skipped the part. Okay, great. Before they gave me the epidural, they saw which way the baby was facing so that they'll know which way to turn or whatever. So then after that, that's when I got the epidural. After I got the epidural, it was two doctors, one on each side after they oiled me up. Doctor here, doctor here. I had um, nurses, other nurses and doctors in the room. They were monitoring the baby. They were monitoring me, my vital signs, all of that. Y'all, I, I kept farting. <laughs> I kept farting and I could not control it because I couldn't feel my butt cheeks. Like, you know how usually when you know you're about to fart and it's a room full of people, you, you clench your butt, butt cheeks together so that you don't fart? I couldn't do that because I couldn't feel shit. Like, I literally couldn't feel anything. So... I was just farting and I could smell it and I know that the doctor smelled it and they were like making faces and shit but whatever. They probably smell worse. Two doctors on each side and then they literally, they said, and it just felt like, oh my god y'all, I would never do that again. It was the weirdest 
feeling in my life like i don't know my life but it was so weird just imagine them flipping a baby in your belly from the outside and it was so much pressure like i couldn't i, I couldn't imagine feel, actually feeling the pain of that like what if i wasn't numb but I was numb, so I didn't feel anything but pressure. But it was just weird. And it literally took like five seconds. And they were like, okay, we're done. And then they did the sonogram. And they were like, oh, yeah, he's turned. He's head down now. So you'll be okay to um, just go about your business after this. And hopefully he doesn't turn back by the time this time to give birth. So I was like, what you mean? Hopefully he don't turn back. He could turn back. They were like, yeah, he could turn back. So they gave me this brace thing or whatever to wear until around my delivery time they were like keep this on like all day all night or whatever it will stop him from you know moving like a week later but i did have my boyfriend come down um to go to appointments with me like usually i would go by myself like it was no big deal especially my sister worked in the hospital so i was like it's no big deal but this specific time i was like oh just come down go to my appointments with me because they all in the same day so i went to all of my appointments <clears throat> my very last appointment was the sonogram appointment just to check up on the baby how he's growing the fluid blah, blah blah so i did my sonogram and the lady was acting mad weird she was like you you know how you usually get the same thing all the time so you know what to expect but she kept going back and doing the same thing over like checking again like she checked and then she checked again and then she checked again and then she checked again and i'm like what the fuck like what's going on so then she like gets on the phone. She goes behind that window. She like gets on the phone. Da, da, da. I'm just looking at my boyfriend. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Like, I didn't think anything of it because she didn't say anything. But I was just like, what is going on? Like, why is she acting so weird? She comes out the room and she's like, you need to go to labor and delivery right now. And I was like, right now, bitch, I had shit planned after this. She's like, you need to go to labor and delivery right now. You need to get induced. We was going to go to the mall. Go shopping for the baby i wanted to go to chipotle i'm like why and she was like the doctor explained to you just go to the labor and delivery like you need to hurry up whatever so i go to go over to the labor and delivery before i even like say hey i'm just coming over from blah 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 they were like how would they're like okay we got a room prep for you blah 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 come on and i'm like what's going on what are y'all talking about they're like you're about to give birth like we're about to induce you and i'm like why and the doctor and then or the nurse um, I don't remember who. They basically told me that when I went to go get my sonogram, that like there's a fluid in your sac. I don't, what is it called? Abdominal fluid or anyways, the fluid that's in your sac that basically protects your baby is gone. And also your placenta rupture. Your placenta is usually supposed to be like this or whatever, and now it's like that, like it's skinny. So the baby is not getting all the nutrients that he's supposed to be getting. Hey guys, if you wanna see more story times and videos like this, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and subscribe to my channel right now. Thank you. In order to prevent any complications, we're just going to induce you. You need to get the baby out now. I wasn't due for like another week or whatever. So it wasn't bad. I was like, um, like, should I call my family and tell them to come? Should they be like, oh, just call them and let them know that you're being induced. But you probably don't need to call them to come like anytime soon because, you know, when you get induced, it takes a little bit longer because they give you a medicine that costs Pitocin. While Pitocin induces your labor, it also slows it down, if that makes sense. So some hours go by and I'm having contractions, blah, 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 like normal, like I'm going through labor. And then at some point, like, I don't feel the contractions. The nurse come in and she was like talking to me. Like she was just coming in and she, she was doing something. She was talking to me. Da, 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 da. And I was just talking back. I was like, da, 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 da. we was having a full blown conversation. And she looked over to the monitor. You know the monitor that, that shows when you're having contractions. And it says that I was having a big ass contraction. And she was like, you don't feel that? And I was like, feel what? No. She was like, you're having a big contraction right now. She was like, it don't hurt. And I was like no i don't feel anything i feel tightness but i don't feel pain before i was having pain like i could feel the contractions but she was talking to me and i was having a big ass contraction and i didn't feel it so she was like okay that's odd blah blah, blah. she leaves i guess she goes to the nurse station they monitor there and then she comes back and she's like did you feel that one and i was like no i didn't feel anything then the doctor comes and he checks to see how far along i'm dilated at this point i'm only like 
three or four centimeters dilated so they said that it was going to take a long time so they're like okay you're dilating slowly but that's kind of normal they're like okay whatever so then this is mind you just to give you time just to give you time clips when we went to our, my appointment my appointment was probably at eight o'clock in the morning because i had a lot of appointments the last appointment um the sonogram appointment was at probably at like 9 30 10 o'clock and then I went over to labor and delivery probably at like 10, 15, 11, 30 in the morning. So I started labor around this time, like 10, 10 o'clock in, like in the morning. That's when they gave me Pitocin and all this other stuff. Just to give you an idea. Right now when I'm having these, when the nerves, when I'm having these big contractions and I'm not feeling anything, this is like around 7, 8 o'clock. So hours went by like, I'm, you know, I've been doing it for, you know, some hours or whatever. And they're like, okay. So I just continue to lay there. A nurse comes in. She's like, now, she's like, every time you have a contraction, the baby heart rate drop, drops. The doctor comes in and they're like, we have to break your water because your water haven't broke yet and speed up your labor because baby heart rate is keeps on dropping like every time, you know, you have a contraction. Like, that's not good. So then he was like, let me check how far along you dilated. Y'all, remember I told you in the beginning, midday, when he checked, I was like three or four centimeters dilated. Hours went by and I was only like four. So he was like, I don't even think it's worth it to break your water. We need the baby to get out now. So then they was like, we need to have an emergency C-section. Like, I was so mad, y'all. I was crying because I felt like I did all of that for no reason. Like I did the conversion, the baby conversion, just so that he could not be breached and he could turn so that I could have a natural birth. I went through all of this. I was in labor for all of these hours just for me to have a C-section. But the most important thing for me at that moment, I need to get this baby out so that he could be born healthy. So when I was getting my C-section done, like, you know you're awake and stuff like that. And the doctor, they were just talking to each other. They were talking about lunch. They were talking about dinners. They were talking about movies and shit. They were just laughing at that. <laughs> and they were tracking jokes. They are like, oh, did you have a cherry tattoo right here? And I was like, yeah. They was like, oh, it's an apple now. <laughs> like once we came out of delivery and recovery and all of that our family was there um to greet the baby so here's the next crazy part remember i told y'all that i was addicted to pain medicine and the doctors and the nurses kept assuring me that it would be safe for the baby it would be okay once he was born he had two things one he had jaundice. Second thing, he had another condition. I don't know exactly what it's called. If I figure, find it, I'll put it on screen. But he was a basically addicted to the pain medicine. Like, my baby, my newborn baby, was addicted to pain medicine. Most of the time we were in the hospital, he was in the NICU. If he wasn't feeding, then he was in the NICU because he had jaundice and he was addicted to the, the pain medicine. So he would be like shaking. Remember I told you I was shaking un uncontrollably. He basically went cold turkey because I wasn't taking it anymore. And now he was born and he wasn't getting the pain medicine. So he was going through withdrawal just like I was going through withdrawal. So he was shaking uncontrollably. He was suck uncontrollably and they were like what's wrong whatever so then they figured out that he was basically addicted to the medicine so when i went home i had to leave him we had to leave him i was so sad y'all he was in the hospital for like two weeks me and my boyfriend we would go there every day i was so just sad that i felt like i made him addicted to pain medicine like i feel like i did this like if i if, if it wasn't for me like taking the medicine and if it wasn't for me t like taking the medicine and stuff like that, then he wouldn't be going through this. So I was just super like depressed about that. That was my fault. It was my fault, but I should have just known better. You know what I mean? Yes, I was like 19 at the time, but two weeks later was able to bring him home and he was fine. He was a completely healthy baby after that. However, I wasn't so healthy. I had depression. Towards the very end of my pregnancy, and after I gave birth, my skin broke out so bad. I've never had acne. Like in high school, elementary school, middle school, uh, college, I've never ever had acne. Like I might get bumps here and there. It was a shock to me. 
I don't want to offend anyone, anyone that has acne or anything. And I'm not saying that if you have acne, you're ugly. But to me, it was just like I never had it, never had it before. And out of nowhere, like my face just like I just wanted to hide under a rock. Like people wanted to come visit the baby. And I didn't even want people to come. Like I denied a few people from coming to visit because I was so depressed and I was so ashamed of my act. I don't know. It was just a traumatic, you know, thing for me. And I just didn't feel pretty. I just you know how it is when you just don't feel yourself and you don't feel good. You feel like you don't look good. You just feel disgusted and stuff like that. So I was dealing with that while having a newborn at the age of 19. It was really difficult. Remember I told y'all I never really had sickle cell crisis or anything like that. I would have I would have expected that after I gave birth that I wouldn't have so many sickle cell crisis anymore. Sickle cell crisis anymore that I would just go back to the way I was. No, baby, that triggered my sickle cell till this day. After that, I was consistently having a sickle cell crisis. And it was so crazy because I was trying to take care of a newborn baby. And at this time, my boyfriend was still at school. So for the most part, in the beginning, I was doing it by myself. I just felt like, dog, like I can't even take care of my kid because I'm always in the hospital. Like, I'm always in the doctor's. Like, it was so annoying like thank god that i passed that and i went through it and we got through it and i had so much help and support because baby it was a lot it's basically it's about my crazy birth story and all of the crazy events that happened to me it was definitely more but i just wanted to tell you all like the gist of it because i just want y'all to know that Shit don't be easy. Like, it look easy on the other side. It's stuff that y'all wouldn't even know that somebody went through. Everybody's situation is different. Everybody's pregnancy is different. Everyone's birth story is different. Like, I've heard some crazy birth, sto birth, birth stories from my friends and family members. And I just like, oh, like, you real life super woman. Like, women aren't super women because I just be like, how did you go through that? And you just, and you just be a mom. I had a worse per postpartum with my daughter. Like, my pregnancy, for the most part, was smooth. But baby, my postpartum, it was not a joke. Let me know if y'all want to know that story time. Two things. Let me know if you want to hear my postpartum story with my daughter. And let me know if you want to hear my raising a baby in college story. Because my journey was crazy. That's it for my story time. I hope you all really enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing to my channel and I'll see y'all in my next video.